Hello beautiful yogis, namaste. My name is Andre Louis and welcome to our breakout beginners class. So whether you are a complete beginner or perhaps you've been practicing and just haven't quite gotten a hold of the finer intricacies of your practice, we're going to give you the tools now to set you up for success. Whether it's about the way that you breathe, whether it's about the way that you move, whether it's about certain postures or the alignment or transition from one posture to the other. We're going to break all that down in a nice little short informative session and we're going to wrap it all up by doing a flow together. We're going to get you ready to practice anytime, anywhere and excited to practice more. We're going to build up a bit of sweat. We're going to have some fun. Please be curious, be enthusiastic and we will have fun. Let's go. One of the things that can be quite intimidating about doing yoga for the first time is the way that we breathe. You might have heard the terms Ujjayi breath or breathe through your nose or Victoria's breath. All those names don't really matter. What we want to apply is to have a controlled breath. We want to regulate our breath so that we create an even flow of air. Rather than having short breaths or a short inhale and a, uh, and a long exhale or vice versa, we want to try and make our inhale and our exhale of equal length. So how do we do that? We use breath in and out through our nose. So both your inhale and your exhale goes through the nose. And we're going to do a little bit of an experiment today. I'm going to show you how to create this breath through your nose and create a bit of friction at the back of your throat. So with me, please go ahead and breathe through your nose. Inhale. And then open your mouth to the sound of H-A. <sighs> Good. So that's the basic premise of what we want to do. Although we will keep our mouth closed and breathe in and out through our nose. So now, please use your hand and you're going to imagine that your hand is a mirror or a window. And when you exhale, you're going to try and steam that up. You're going to create moisture on this window through the sound of H-A with the exhalation. So just as we did, through the nose, inhale, full up. Open mouth. And you can feel that heat coming through. And the sound is what creates the vibration. And that's what creates the control. Now we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to keep our mouth closed. So inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. And that is the basic principle of how we breathe or how we use Ujjayi breath. If this is too much, then it's fine to keep a slight, uh, a slight opening to your, uh, to your lips. Keeping it slightly open to and breathe as follows. Inhale. Exhale. You're still breathing through your nose, but there's a slight opening through your lips. Now we'll apply that to how we move. We'll start with a very well-known sequence called Sun A. And this is a basic warm-up posture. We're going to take it one step at a time. Please start on your hands and your knees. Get your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. You're on the middle of your mat. And then move your hands slightly forward. Hands are shoulder width apart. Tuck the toes of your feet. And then press into your hands and feet so that your knees are lifted. Slowly keep your arms straight. And then slowly start to straighten the legs. So what will happen is your body will want to go into uh, like a push-up position. But instead of that, press into your hands and move your chest towards your legs. Down dog. Feet are hip width apart. Hands are shoulder width apart. And it's completely okay to bend your knees. If it feels strong on your hamstrings, that's normal. Bend the knees for support. Relax your neck. Inhale. Look towards your hands. Exhale, slowly walk your feet behind uh, your hands. So it's okay to keep your knees bent if you're struggling to walk forward. Slowly walk forward till you get to the top of your mat. Feet are together. And now let your torso hang heavy. Head is heavy down. Forward fold. 
Again, it's okay to have a bend to your knees here. It's not about getting straight legs. Inhale, lift halfway. Bring your torso up parallel to the ground. So your spine, your back, is in a horizontal line. You want to create a tabletop back. So what will happen is spine will round, the chest will hang forward as if the fingers go down. Press your chest out and draw your shoulder blades back, creating a tabletop position. Notice within the legs want to lock out. We want to prevent that. Keep a small bend to your knees. This activates the muscles around it. Inhale, you lengthen the spine. Spine is long forward. Exhale, fold, actively fold. And again, it's fine to have a bend to the knees. You want to take your heart towards the knees. Use the exhalation to fold. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, lift halfway. Chest out, shoulder blades back, spine long. Exhale to fold. One more time. Inhale, halfway lift. Remember, knees don't lock. They keep a slight bend. Spine is long, neck is long. Exhale to fold. Now press into your feet, engage your core, and stand up all the way. Inhale, high mountain. Legs remain active, engage the core, bring the torso up, stand upright. And as you stand upright, sweep your arms up to the sky. Arms reach up to the ceiling. This is called high mountain. Legs are straight, arms are active, shoulders are relaxed. Breathe in, stretch up a little more. Exhale, forward fold. Pull your belly in, move your hips back to fold forward. And the hands can go through the heart, they can go to the sides, it doesn't matter. You fold your heart towards the knees, forehead towards the shin. Inhale, lift halfway, same as before. Exhale, high plank. Put your hands down and step back, one foot at a time. High plank is a high push-up position. Take a seat as we break down a concept. One of the activations we want to create through our upper body when we have our hands on the floor, whichever posture that may be, is a squeeze of our elbows down and in. So often when we carry weight on our hands, like in a push-up or down dog, our shoulders will go up and our elbows will go out. So the illustration of that is reach your arms out and now turn your elbows up and squeeze your shoulders up. It feels super un uncomfy, eh? uncomfortable. Right, now do the opposite. Draw your elbows and pinky fingers down and in, and draw your shoulders down. That is an engagement of your chest muscles and of your lateral muscles. So the lateral muscles work with your scapula, which is your shoulder blade. And we want to create that action of down with the elbows and down with the shoulders. See how that muscle fires up. That is what's gonna give you stability in your torso, upper torso, chest, and upper back. And this we want to incorporate when we do our high plank or high push-up and moving into chaturanga. Essentially, any posture where your hands are on the floor, you want to create that action. Let's get going. So in your high plank position, high push-up, Engage the same activation. Elbows squeeze in towards one another. Shoulders draw away from the ears. Feel the lateral muscles fire up. Know that you can always put your knees on the floor. Breathe in. Exhale. Chaturanga. Halfway down. Bend the elbows to 90 degrees. Not more. It can be less. And notice elbows want to go out. But squeeze in. Use the lateral muscles and scapula. Release down onto your belly. Cobra pose. Untuck your toes so that the tops of the feet are on the floor, and then press them down so that your kneecaps lift. Hands underneath the shoulders. Inhale, lift your heart. And this is a floating cobra. So I'm not pushing into my hands. I'm pushing my feet down to lift my heart. So the feet are like the tail of a cobra, and my heart lifts just like a cobra ready to strike. you got three. Two. There's little to no weight in your hands. One more inhale. Exhale, melt it down. Good work. Press into your hands and knees. Tabletop position. Tuck the toes. Down dog. Exhale. Good.
When we breathe in yoga, we want the breath to dictate how we move. And there's a very specific connection to breath. The basic principle is that when we inhale, just like the movement of air, there's a movement upwards. And what dictates this movement? Your heart. So if your heart is moving in an upwards direction, it probably means that you need to inhale. Similarly, when you exhale, that's a movement downwards. Again, dictated by the heart. When the heart is moving down, there's an exhalation to couple that movement. How do we implement this, Andre Louis? So the breath is the rhythm to which you move. Just like in dancing, you have music that creates a tempo and the physical movement follows that tempo. So too in yoga, your breath sets the, sets the rhythm or the tempo and your body moves in synchronicity to that breath, to that tempo, to that movement. So how is this illustrated in the sun A that we just did? To explain, for each movement, there's a half breath. Half breath in or exhale. So it will be inhale, exhale, step through top of the mat, fold over your legs. Inhale, lift the torso halfway, exhale to fold. Inhale, stand up high mountain, exhale to fold chest to thighs. Inhale, lift halfway, exhale, hands down, step to high plank, and so on and so forth. So you catch my drift. Now, we're going to apply this newfound knowledge of the breath and move with our breath. Here we go. So to start in our home base, down dog, hands down, tuck the toes, lift the hips up high, heels down low. Just to synchronize our breath, let's take a big breath together. Inhale, full up. Open mouth sigh. Keep the mouth closed. Inhale. Exhale, step your hands to the top of the mat into a forward fold. Feet together, chest towards the thighs. Inhale, lift halfway. Chest out, shoulder blades back, long spine horizontal line. Exhale to fold. Inhale, high mountain. Stand up all the way, meet the hands above your head. Exhale, forward fold. Reverse that motion, fold forward. Take your heart towards your shins. Inhale, lift halfway. Remember the micro bent to knees, flat back. Exhale, high plank. Hands down, step back to a high plank position. Hold here. Good work. That's a nice flow. Already, maybe you can feel how you're synchronizing your breath and movement. Now, we're going to go into Chaturanga. The same principles we applied. Elbows in, shoulders down. For this one, start in high plank and put your knees down to support. We did a tester previously. Inhale, squeeze the elbows in. Exhale, halfway down, support the chaturanga, elbows to 90 degrees. Elbows want to go out, shoulders want to draw up. Squeeze the elbows in, draw the shoulders down. Inhale, up dog. Press into your hands and feet and lift your body off the floor. So notice I'm not hanging on my skeletal structure. I'm pressing myself away from the earth. Shoulders still draw down. Elbows still squeeze in. You can keep your feet as they are or untuck the toes. Notice my legs are off the floor. From here, engage your core to lift your hips. Down dog. Use the core, lift the hips, lift the hips. Flip, flip the feet again. Down dog. We're back where we started. One more time. Inhale, bend the knees, prepare. Exhale, step to the top of the mat into a fold. Inhale, lift halfway, flat back, exhale to fold. Inhale, high mountain, stand up, arms above the head. Exhale, forward fold, fold over your legs, hip line draws back, heart towards the shins. Inhale, lift halfway, flat back. Exhale, hands down, high plank, that's a high push-up position. Option to put the knees down, breathe in, squeeze the elbows in. Exhale, chaturanga, halfway down. Inhale, up dog. Legs stay off the floor. Push your body away. Shoulders down, elbows in. Exhale, down dog. Hips up high, heels down low. Gently put the knees down. Take a moment to take a breath. Well done, guys. That's our sun A. We're going to take it a little bit further now. 
Okay guys, that was our sun A. And sun A is really just a warm-up sequence. It's something that can be done by itself. You can do it in the morning, get the body going, get the blood pumping, and something that you can just do in repetition. You can punch it out. You can get into the meditation of the movement. Now we're going to move to Sun B, which has a bit more intricacy to it than the Sun A. There's a few more postures, and it is a standing or lunging sequence. And once again, we're going to look at how we string certain postures together to create a sequence that is a set sequence. Okay, let's go. Let's start in our down dog position. In your down dog, the same things apply as before. Hands are spread wide, fing fingers are spread wide, hands are flat, relax the neck, can be a bend to the knees. Inhale, lift your right leg. Right leg lifts up to the skies. This is called three-legged dog. So you maintain the down dog position and you lift the leg up. This is essentially to create space for you to step your leg through. Breathe in. Exhale, step your right foot between your hands. Move forward into a high plank position, bring the knee to the nose and try to step your foot between your hands. It's okay if you can't step through. Most of us can't do that when we start. However, if your foot is not between the hands, take your hand, grab your ankle, and place your foot between your hands. That's a really important setup. Right foot is flat, right toes point straight forward. And already here, get high up onto your left toes. Left leg is the back leg. Get high up onto the toes, lift the heel, and straighten your left leg. So don't let the stuff hang. Activate so that the back leg is strong, the front leg is strong. Now engage your core and see if you can bring a little bit of lift up through your torso so that your arms are light, your fingers are light. And from here, slowly, with all that activation of the legs and the core, rise up. Inhale, high crescent lunge. And what high crescent lunge looks like is a square hips to the front. My hips face the front. My back leg, which is the left leg, is still strong. Heel is lifted. And the straight leg, the straightening of your leg, pulls your left hip forward. At the same time, as you lunge into your right leg, pull your right hip back. This allows you to square your hips so that you can go deeper into the posture if you like. Arms are straight, shoulders are relaxed, and there's a slight inward rotation. Same as what we did for the Chaturanga, that inward rotation to fire up the laterals. You've got another three breaths here. And just this posture alone can start to become quite challenging on the thighs. So turn up your breath. Golden rule of yoga that whenever we're challenged to take our focus back to the breath, because our breath helps us to maintain the integrity of the posture when we get challenged physically. The next transition, in other words, the next movement from one posture to the other, is one that's done often in yoga. Warrior two. And we're going to break it down now in this transition breakdown. Transition breakdown, high crescent lunge to warrior two. So the movement here is all about control. We're going to move from square hips to open hips to the side. Now my hips are square to the front. Now I open the hips to the side. And all this comes from a control of the back foot and the back leg. Your back leg is the dominant leg. I'm square, hips face forward, high up on the back toes. Bring a little bit of weight into my front leg, and then slowly I start to turn the leg. So even the foot's turning, the movement is initiated from my hip joint, opening the hip up. And then with control, the heel gets placed down. It's not an action of dropping into your heel. We want to avoid weight falling down. Very much controlled. From our high crescent lunge, we breathe in, exhale, slow movement controlled, place my foot down with control. And as I place it, I create pressure down into the foot. That's your transition. Crescent lunge to warrior two. Now that we're in warrior two, let's refine our posture. 
So the front leg has not moved. Still the same as what it was in high crescent lunge. Right toes point forward, right knee moves in the direction of the toes. Your back leg and foot has changed. Back foot is flat and it's not parallel to the back of your mat but slightly forward. So as you can see, my big toes are angled towards the tap, top of the mat, just a little. And I initiate a anchor through this foot. So I push down and away so that my entire left leg remains strong. We want to avoid the knee coming in through a strong outer line. And that line, that activation, allows the hips to go forward to deepen our lunge. Warrior two, arms extend to three and nine, relax the shoulders, hands are active. Your gaze, or what we call our dristi, is over the front fingers. Five breaths, stay with your breath. Four more. Three, and if you wanna challenge yourself to go a little deeper, when you exhale, you'll find more push through the back foot to take the hips deeper into the lunge. Two more breaths. One more. Warrior two to reverse warrior. Your legs stay exactly as they are. And then I take my right hand and I stay at the length of my rib cage. I start to take the hand up and now I'm stretching through my rib cage through the arm. I continue to take that up and reach a little bit back. And once we do this, the front leg tends to want to straighten. So reactivate from the back leg, get your hips deep into the lunge. Now you stay and breathe. Make sure that your top hand is active and that helps you to reach up and back to amplify the stretch through your rib cage and your armpit. Think of lifting your belly off of your thigh. And again, five breaths here. If you wanna take it deeper, exhale will help you take the hips forward into the lunge, four. Don't worry too much about your left hand. You can just rest somewhere. The, the goal is not to reach down your leg. Three. Two. One more inhale. Exhale, extended side angle. Legs still remain the same. I know it's probably burning in the thigh, but breathe, stay with me. Extended side angle. Reach your torso and your right arm forward, as forward as you can. Then bring the right arm inside your right thigh. We don't wanna lean on the leg, we want the arm inside the thigh. Press into the leg to open your chest. Left arm extends forwards and upwards. So notice the big line from my back foot up my leg through the torso, arms become that same extension. Extended side angle. Depth again will be with hips that move forward. You got five breaths. This is strong. Turn your breath up. Four. Three. Keep the outside blade of your left foot flat. Two. One more. Inhale to reverse triangle. So previously we had reverse warrior where the legs stay in the warrior two shape. Inhale, reverse triangle. This time, both legs straighten out and you create that same motion through the right arm and the torso. So notice I'm a bit hyper flexible. We don't want to lock our knee. We want to keep a small bend there so that the muscles are engaged. Both legs straight. Hips still move forward a bit, and then you stretch up and back. Again, a big stretch through your side body into the outer hip of the right, of the right leg. Breathe, you got five. Four more. Notice that my feet placement has not changed at all since we went into warrior two. You got two more. Your feet are the foundation where you ground your posture. One more, breathe in. Exhale, windmill the hands down, low lunge. From here, we will do our vinyasa in our second transition breakdown. For our next transition breakdown, we want to show how we move 
from our lunging postures or our warrior postures straight into our chaturanga up dog down dog which is affectionately known as our vinyasa and what the trick is here is to remember that you need to slightly lengthen your exhale and that the entire movement down into chaturanga is a single exhalation here we go so in the sequence we just did we went from reverse triangle breathe in exhale all the way down chaturanga windmill your hands down flatten the palms step back to a high plank now you've got the option to stay here and take another breath in exhale chaturanga however if you want to make it one fluid motion we go all the way into chaturanga with a single exhalation let's give that a go reverse triangle breathe in exhale windmill down hands down to the floor step back bend the elbows chaturanga all one long exhalation inhale up dog option to flip the feet thighs lifted heart open exhale down dog good work guys all right now because we always balance everything out in yoga we're going to do exactly the same on the left hand side as what we did on the right hand side here we go once again we start in down dog inhale left leg lifts three-legged dog lift your left leg up don't let the foot just hang out make it active breathe in exhale step between your hands left foot between the hands if you can't step through grab the ankle with the hand step between your hands left foot is flat left toes point forward high up on the right toes right leg strong and straight core active we rise with control inhale high crescent lunge so it's the exact same thing as we did the other side so we really have like a bit of a review now as to the alignment just on the left hand side crescent lunge most important thing is that back foot if that starts to go any which way you're going to lose your balance stay strong straighten the leg that'll help you pull your right hip or the back hip forward left toes point forward left knee moves forward arms are straight shoulders relaxed that inward rotation breathe in here comes the transition we broke down warrior two with control open the hips to a rotation of your back leg firmly with control place the back foot flat as you place it flat push down and away through the outer blade of the foot through the outer line of the leg foot is angled slightly forward from parallel strong back leg takes the hips forward deeper into the lunge five breaths arms at three and nine relax your shoulders gaze over the front fingers four three two if you feel the thighs talking already stay with your breath one more inhale reverse warrior so the movement is straight up you want to lengthen through the rib cage so instead of going forward go upwards keep the hips and the legs static extend up extend up extend up my movement is up and as i'm at the full reach i start to move that towards the back of the room right hand is is light back foot presses to take my hips deeper if i like reverse warrior you've got four more breaths three two one more inhale exhale extended side extended side angle back foot stays grounded take the hips more forward as you reach through the torso and the left arm then the left arm comes inside the thigh right arm extends on the same powerful line for my back leg torso arm becomes the extension rotation of the chest open and the same thing as we've always done with the arms elbow rotates down breathe got another four three use your breath to break through that physical barrier that challenge that discomfort two more one more inhale reverse triangle so same movement up and back but this time 
the front leg straightens, left leg straightens. Extend up, and then go back. Push into the back leg, hip still move slightly forward. Make sure there's a micro bend to your knee. Reach up and back. Looking good, guys. You got five. Here also the back hand is light. Four. Three. Two. Stay activated in the legs. One more. Exhale, chaturanga, windmill down, hands to the floor, step back, halfway push up, all in one long exhalation. Inhale, up dog, Foot can, feet can flip or not. Exhale, down dog, hips up high, heels down low. <clears throat> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is our Sun B sequence. So how do we effectively use the breath when we move in yoga? It's quite simple actually in principle, but not necessarily as easy to, ap to apply practically. Breath to movement simply means to connect the movement to how we breathe. Now you've already noticed once we get into the postures that it becomes more challenging to control your breath. So as we started the class and focused on how we can move to a controlled breath, through the use of our nose, through the restriction of our throat, we apply that now as we move. We already know that inhale creates movement up, exhale creates movement down. But how does the breath connect the different postures together? And the answer is that we simply have one or the other to connect two postures together. One, inhale, or the other, exhale. For each movement between postures, so not the posture itself, for each movement between postures, there's either an inhalation or the exhalation. So what do we take from this? When we start to move, when we start to flow from one posture to the other, it becomes not about the posture itself, but more about stringing the postures together. And that little lock, that little connection point between the postures is your breath. Inhale to the exhale to the inhale. So to illustrate, the sequence we're about to do will be as follows. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, step through between the hands. Inhale, high crescent lunge. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Inhale, reverse triangle. Exhale, down to the floor, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. So you see, it very much becomes like music or like dancing. The rhythm, the notes are given by the breath and the movement of the body follows suit. So don't worry too much about being perfect. That does not exist in the yoga world. Move with your breath and see how easily and with as, with as much control you can move your body. So it's important to note that we create a continuous motion here. We're going to do two sets, twice on the right, twice on the left. And we string this together to create a moving meditation. This is where we kind of move into an aerobic element of the class. We're looking to challenge the breath a little and to kick the heart rate up just a bit. Let's get those juices, the blood, blood pumping. Down dog. Take your time to settle in. Three breaths here. Find your focus. Let your breath be the compass that holds your attention. One more breath cycle. On the right side, we're going to take it slow. Inhale, three-legged dog. Right leg extends. You know this, so trust yourself. Exhale, step between the hands, low lunge. Activate the legs, right foot po points forward. Inhale, high crescent lunge, rise up, the back heel is lifted. Exhale, warrior two. With control, turn the back heel flat, press into the back foot, straight back leg. Inhale, reverse warrior. The legs stay as they are, reach up and back. Exhale, extended side angle, reach forward, bring the arm inside the thigh, the left arm reaches at the angle. Inhale, reverse triangle, both legs straight, as you reach the right arm up and back, stretch into your ribs. Exhale, chaturanga, hands go down to the mat. You step back halfway down, chaturanga. 
Inhale, up dog. Keep the legs lifted. Press your body away from the mat. Exhale, down dog. Hips up high, heels down low. Left side, left leg lifts. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, step between the hands, low lunge. Left foot between the hands, left toes forward, right heel lifted. Inhale, high crescent lunge. Rise up, keep your right leg strong. Exhale, warrior two. With control, open the hips, flatten the back foot. Back leg straight and strong. Inhale, reverse warrior. Keep the warrior two legs, stretch up and back. Exhale, extended side angle. Take the hips forward into the lunge. Left arm inside thigh, right arm extends. Inhale, reverse triangle. Both legs straight. Reach up and back, stretch your ribs. Exhale, chaturanga. Windmill the hands to mat. Step back, elbows to 90 degrees. Inhale, up dog. Lift your heart. Exhale, down dog. Hips up high, heels down low. Stay with me, one more set. Right leg lifts. Inhale, three-legged dog. Exhale, step between the hands, low lunge. With the breath, inhale, high crescent lunge. Focus on the breath rhythm. Exhale, warrior two, open to the side. Inhale, reverse warrior, draw up and back. Exhale, extended side angle, arm inside the thigh. Left arm extends, chest open. Inhale, reverse triangle, Keep the legs engaged. Exhale, windmill hands down. Chaturanga, option to have the knees down, always. You can always skip your chaturanga also. Up dog, inhale. Exhale, down dog. Left leg lifts. Inhale, three-legged dog. Last one, stay with me, guys. Exhale, step between your hands. Low lunge. Rise up. Inhale, high crescent lunge. Exhale, warrior two. Open the hips, firm control, back foot flat. Inhale, reverse warrior. Reach up and back. Exhale, extended side angle. Arm inside the thigh, left arm extends. Inhale, reverse, reverse triangle. Both legs are straight. Exhale, windmill the hands down. Step back, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Lightly put your knees down. Open the knees wide. Let your hips melt onto your heels. Well done, everyone. How does that feel? Sure, the body is telling you that, hey, I've moved a bit. Maybe the heart's racing and all that is good. We are creating new movement, new, new neural pathways in the body. And that is challenging at first. It is hard. But the more we practice, it being a practice, a practice of a consistency, the quicker the body responds and becomes familiar. It gets ingrained in our nervous system. It gets ingrained in our body. That was our beginner's breakdown, our breakout series for the beginners. It's very much about our standing postures and the more challenging postures. We'll steer clear from any of the seated or grounded postures today, as this generally has more time to be broken down by your teacher during class. I do hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been valuable. And I certainly hope to see you again soon, whether that be digital or in person. Thank you for joining us today. And happy practicing. Goodbye.